this first problem is pretty easy. You're just being asked to take the first derivative, and this is just a constant. So you really just want g times x prime of x minus g down to C, G of F of X, we want the derivative of this. This is really just a chain rule. The derivative of the inner function times the derivative of the outer function with the inner function plug back in. So before from our table, the derivative of F at negative 1 is 2 f of negative 1 is 0, and g prime of 0 is 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. That last one, we're just looking at when x is 0, my derivative in the function g is 4. Skipping back to b, the way I read this is f of x squared times g of x cubed. I don't think they mean the second derivative and the third derivative because there's not enough information from the table. And so this is just the product rule. And so the product rule says the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. But this is also a chain rule problem because we have an inner function squared. So this first derivative will be 2 times f of x to the 1 power times the derivative of the inner times the second function, which is g of x cubed, plus the derivative of the second function will be 3 g of x all squared times the derivative of that inner function times the first function f of x squared. And all of these are when x equals 0 want 2 and f prime of 0, that's negative 2, times, sorry, not f prime of 0, f of 0. f of 0 is negative 1, times f prime of 0, that is negative 2. Times g of G of 0 is negative 3. I want that cubed. Plus 3. G of x squared. G of 0 is again negative 3. That time that negative 3 is squared. And g prime of 0, that's 4. Times f of x. f of 0 is negative 1. And I square it. According to my math, I'm getting 216, but check the t, because I've never been good at arithmetic. Looking at part d, it's really very much the same as c, except that the inner function and the outer function have switched. Now we have g prime of x times the derivative of the outer with the inner plugged in at negative 1. g prime of negative 1 is 1 times f prime of g of negative 1. Well, that time that's negative 1. And so we look for the derivative. 
derivative of f at negative one is equal to one times two. The next problem is a quotient rule problem. If p is the numerator and q is the denominator, the quotient rule can be written like this, a minus, not a plus. This helps me account for things. So p prime is really f prime of x times q. So that's really g of x plus 2 minus q prime. Well, that's just going to be g prime of x. So now that we have our q, our q prime, the derivative of gx plus 2 is just greek p prime of x and p and our denominator squared. Now we can just plug things in. We're looking at x equals 0. So the derivative of f at 0 is negative 2 times g of 0 is negative 3 plus 2 is just negative 1 minus the derivative of g at 0 is 4 times f of 0 that's negative 1. And again, our g plus 2 is that negative 1. But this time I square it. Simplifying should give us 3 plus 4 over negative 1 squared, or 7. And for part f, I've broken this down into our inner function, outer function, and so we want the derivative of u, u prime. Well, that's going to be the derivative of x is 1 plus f prime of x. The derivative of g, or v prime, will be g prime with u plugged in. And the chain rule says we multiply these two derivatives. D u d v times it's really d u d x and d u d u. The u's cancel and I really have the derivative of the outer with respect to x. And I multiply these back together. 1 plus f prime at 0 times g prime at x plus f of 0. Just plugging our u back in. So f prime at 0, according to our table, is back to negative 2, plus 1. And I'm going to multiply that times the derivative of 0 plus f of 0, and f of 0 is negative 1. So I really want negative 1 times the derivative of g at negative 1. According to our table, the derivative of g at negative 1 is 1. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 